everybody, Ann here, sitting here in the tiny house having hot coffee today because it's a little cool, which is great. It's raining again. It rained again all night last night, and it's been raining all morning. It stopped now for a little while. I did go out and do chicken chores, as usual. Um, yeah, that's Romeo out there. Um, so, I don't know exactly what I'm going to get done today. I think I'm going to do some laundry. Um, other than that, I don't know. I did want to talk to you about one thing, though, and that is chickens and stress. I've been reading a lot about it because, you know, Torch had a little uh, weirdness going on with him for a little while after he had, you know, experienced a stressful event. But they do experience stress, and I'm learning more and more how not to stress your chickens out. And, you know, the heat can cause stress. Changing diet can cause stress. Moving them from one coop to another can cause stress. Bullying from other chickens can cause stress. And stress is a real thing. It really is. It can cause them to stop laying eggs if they're of egg laying age, you know. Um, it can cause them to just kind of shut down and do nothing. And I think that's kind of what Torch did. So there's some ways to avoid it. I know many of you already know these things, but... Um, Especially when it's hot, make sure they have plenty of shade and that there's water. I put water, because my chicken's free range, in several spots on my property so they can always have access to water. Um, I try not to deviate from their diet too much. I do give them treats, but I, I give them healthy treats. Um, and one thing, too, is your behaviors around your chickens can really make a huge difference in whether or not they're going to be stressed out. For one... You know, predators, well, predators, you can't do anything about predators aside from trying to keep the predators away from your chickens. You know, whether they are hawks, you know, wild animals, you know, domesticated cats or even dogs. Um, luckily, none of the dogs around here have shown too much of an interest in, in the chickens. And sometimes they'll chase them around, but it's not a persistent thing. Um, and Papa, of course, is very, very good with the chickens. In fact, he does not like it if he thinks a chicken is in distress. He will go to them. Yes, he will. Um, so you got to think about predators. Um, but you can think about your own behaviors as well. Um, if you're trying to wrangle your chickens, the worst thing you can do is chase them around. Uh, chasing chickens around, trying to get them to go from one place to another, stresses them out. Um, and the manner in which you wrangle them also can play a, a role in whether or not they're going to be stressed out. Me, when I'm herding my, my chickens, I used to have two big long poles. Sometimes I'll still use them, but I don't swat at them. I don't slap them on the ground. I don't get close to them with them. Um, basically, all I need to do, do is use my two arms and spread them out and just kind of make a motion like this, <laughs> you know, and they know what that means. It's very gentle. It's very subtle. They know that they need to go in this direction or that direction just in accordance with how I move. And a lot of times I can just call here, chick, 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 chick. come on chickens, and they will come running from across the lawn and they'll come to me. The last thing you want to do is get a big object, um, a big heavy object, like a big tree branch or, you know, heavy sticks or something and swat at them. You know, you don't want to swat at the ground close to them to try and scare them. You don't need to scare your chickens. You don't need to scare your chickens to get them to go one way or another. You know, you don't need to slap the trees or slap the bushes. All you need to do is gently usher them, <laughs> most of the time with your hands. If you can't reach into a bush, because um, the Easter eggers, they're behind a big holly bush, and it's got stickers. So what I'll do is I'll take one of the, the big long sticks that I have and just kind of gently stick it in there and show them that they need to go this way um, if I'm trying to get them into the hen house at night. But they go in on their own now, now that... Um, Rocky and Olive are in their own pen, but you don't want to slap the ground with a big tree limb uh, back and forth, especially if you're trying to get close to them. You don't want to make loud noises. You don't, you know, you just don't want to, that stresses chickens out. 
So you got to be really, really careful with how you treat your chickens because if they're too stressed out for too long, well, they won't lay eggs for one and they might end up getting really sick. They might stop eating and drinking um, like Torch did and you may injure them as well. Um, you may, you know, especially with baby chicks, they move so fast. You know, you could be slapping the ground with your big tree limb or whatever, and one of them could run in a direction you didn't expect, and you could end up putting that big tree limb down on top of them and injuring them. So just kind of think about being kind to your animals, all animals. You know, you don't hit, you don't smack your chickens around. You don't smack your dogs around either. And, you know, you don't smack your kids. Oh, would you smack your kids around? You know, there's a difference between, you know, spanking a child and hitting a child or smacking them around. You just got to kind of think, you know, how would you want to be treated in, if you were doing something not right? You, you know, as a human, would you want somebody coming up and smacking you in the face? No. So you don't, you don't kick dogs. You don't hit them hard. You don't do that to your chickens either. You know, it's it's um, kind of disturbing that I'm even having this conversation, but I think it's important. Anyhow, I'm off my soapbox now. I'm going to go outside and do something because I think it's going to start raining again in a little bit. I just knocked over some ant heels, and the baby chicks are actually over there, and that kind of worries me because these ants, they're not fire ants, but they will still swarm yeah, I'm going to have to, oh, see, okay. All right, chickens, come on. we got to get away from this, especially the baby chickens. Oh, I think I got some vinegar. I poured what I had left of that vinegar down in here, and yeah, you can tell there's lots of dead ants, but I didn't have any more vinegar, so... So far, I have poured two full gallons down into the holes, and it still is not completely flooded out. So this goes deep. I'm going to have to just get more water and just keep pouring it on. I just about had it with the last gallon, um, and that would have made four gallons. And there are a lot of dead ants. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour in one more gallon. Oh, is that the queen? Oh no, no, those are just, there's multiples of them, but they're all coming out now. So I'm going to flood this one more time and hopefully that'll do the trick. At least get them to move elsewhere. At least I've reduced the size of this colony a little bit. See, it just keeps soaking in. It's not really running down. It's just still soaking in. It's starting to run down a little bit. I'm sorry, ants. I know you're God's creatures too, but... There's some of God's creatures I just don't want around my chickens, especially my baby chickens. And another bonus is I have a nicely cleaned out vinegar bottle that I can use to store water in after I get all the ants off of it. Look at this. This is several hours later. It's like 5.32 p.m. When I filmed that, as I don't know, probably noon. They've already started rebuilding. I've got some more apple cider vinegar. I hate to use it for this purpose because I use it for my chickens and for pickling, but got to do what I got to do. Sorry, guys. Got a dosha. Once again, oh, I hate to have to use this, but we got to take care of this, you know? Man, they're persistent. Look at this. Rebuilding over here. What's up, Raven? Oh, I see some more over here. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. I hate using apple cider vinegar for this. You know what? I'm going to get the cheap apple cider vinegar. And don't get too close just quite yet, sweetheart. Hopefully this will kill him. I've got Rocky, Olive, and now Splash in here. The whole top is covered with tarps and netting and <laughs> different various 
things. It looks terrible, so I'm not even going to show you. But I wanted... Olive was taking a beating. I mean, not a beating, but Rocky was getting after her way too much. So I brought Splash in here. Splash is such a, a sweet chicken. So we'll see how that goes. It looks like they're getting along pretty well, and Olive doesn't look as lonely. And you know what? Splash just hangs out around the van and the chicken yard, so maybe this will work. I think this video is long enough, don't you? So I'm just going to watch some chicken TV for the rest of the day. Hopefully it won't rain again. It might, might not. I don't care if it does because it just means more water. So anyhow, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.